as any viewers. So today is my January 2015 favorites part the one and this is where I go and the haters go hey 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 because I get like 30 dislikes on every favorite video so suck it okay yay so <laughs> my favorites videos if you're new to my channel I talk about my favorite books CDs music movies uh, games and TV shows and I put trailer links down below in the description box for your handy dandy assistance so you can just go and click on it and it's super duper easy for you and you know I hope I can turn you on to some, to some new things that you maybe hadn't heard about before or whatever so let's get started books there's one book and it's Neil Patrick Harris's Choose Your Own Autobiography. This is amazing. If you are a Neil Patrick Harris fan, you have to get this book. It's amazing. It's styled like a choose your own adventure book. So you read one part of Neil's life and they'll say, if you want to go so and so, go to this page. If you want to skip this party or whatever, go to this page. And it can actually end before you finish the book by some hilarious outcome that he just made up. But it actually tells the true story of his life, how he met his partner, how he got started on Doogie Howser, how he got the part of Dr. Horrible and Dr. Horrible Sing Along Blog, how he became friends with Sir Elton John. It's all very fascinating. He's a fantastic writer and it's just very humorous, but it's serious at the same time, but has a humorous tone. It's just fascinating. I'm not a big fan of autobiographies, to be honest, but Neil Patrick Harris is a genius. He's one of my favorite actors and he wrote a fantastic book. So if you're even a remote, a remotely fan? Remotely a fan of Neil Patrick Harris, pick up Choose Your Own Autobiography today because you'll love it and you'll laugh and I actually laughed out loud reading this book. That never happens. It never ever happens. So that tells you it's really good. So movies this month. I have two examples. They're not open but, well they are open but I haven't actually watched these copies. I have seen the movies. But the first one is The Hobbit and Unexpected Journey. The second is Hobbit Desolation of Smaug. And I also watched The Hobbit The Battle of the Five Armies this month. Or last few weeks, whatever you want to call it. I adore The Hobbit films and I can't wait to watch The Lord of the Rings films. I'm a very, very late Tolkien fan, I know. But I just adore the world that he created for The Hobbit. And I love Peter Jackson's interpretation of the film. Yes, there's some crucial scenes in the book that are missing from the films, but I did enjoy the films. I love Tariel. I know she's a fictional made-up character that's not in the books, but she's a kick-ass female elf and I loved her. And I loved Keely, the dwarf. Oh my gosh, she was so cute. Oh my gosh, new crush alert. I loved Legolas, of course. I mean, who doesn't love or, or <laughs> who doesn't love Orlando Bloom? See, you get tongue-tied when you talk about Orlando Bloom because he's that amazing. And of course, it has Martin Freeman, who is an amazing actor. Benedict Cumberbatch is Smaug, which I I love Benedict Cumberbatch. He's one of my favorite actors. Again, like Neil Patrick Harris and Martin Freeman. It's got Sir Ian McKellen. I mean, oh my gosh, there's so many fantastic people in this. Lee Pace, Richard Armitage. Ah, oh, I just love the whole story, the universe. I usually don't like fantasy books or movies, but I love The Hobbit. I can't wait to watch Lord of the Rings. So yes, I love those three Hobbit films to death. And I watched them basically two two movies in one week, and then the next week I went and saw Battle of the Five Armies. So I highly recommend the, the Hobbit series. Let's see if I can talk some more. Okay. Now, the next movie I saw that's not part of a series was 12 Monkeys. And I watched this in preparation for Sci-Fi's new television show coming out very soon. It's about a week or so away from today when I'm filming. I can't do math. <laughs> 12 Monkeys is about this man named James Cole. And in 1996, this virus is going to wipe... I mean, 1997, sorry. This virus is going to wipe out basically... 99% of the population. So he travels back in time. He expects to go back to 1996, but he actually goes to 1990, which messes everything up. He gets sent to a mental institution. He meets Jeffrey Goins, who is this crazy character played by Brad Pitt, which he was fantastic. He did a fantastic job with the role. And then, you know, he goes back to the present day, then goes to 1996, and then he finds out about the who the leader of the 12 monkeys group is and the 12 monkeys group is trying to spread this virus around the world and they're trying to stop it the 
uh, corporation that is jailing Bruce Willis, Bruce Willis's character James Cole. So it's very, very trippy. It's very like mind effery, effery, mind effery. Let's go with that word. I made that up. But it's very trippy. You have to pay attention to every second of this film, or it'll go over your head. But Terry, do you say it? is it Gilliam or Gilliam? I've never learned how to pronounce his last name. Did a fantastic job with this film, and I can't wait for the show because I love Aaron Stanford and Noah Bean, and they're going to be in 12 Monkeys, and I'm so excited. So I really did enjoy the film though, so check it out if you're into sci-fi, kind of screws with your mind kind of films. It's really good. Another film I thought was great that I actually was pleasantly surprised by was Boyhood. I usually do not like movies that are basically Oscar bait. The Boyhood's different. This is by Richard Linklater who did the book. Uh, the book. Oh, if I can't call it today. He did Before Sunrise, Before Sunset, Before Midnight, those films. And this chronicles the story of a boy named Mason. And it goes from like when he was age 7 to age 17? No, 19. 19. Because it was a 12 year period. And you see him actually age and grow older and go through adolescence and all this. And you see his parents age. And his parents are played by Patricia Arquette and Ethan Hawke, who are both phenomenal in this film. And Eller Coltrane's the boy, Mason, and he does a great job. You get to see him grow up, and that's kind of amazing to think about when you're watching this film, that you're actually watching these people age. And it's just, it's a typical family growing up kind of film, but it's really well done, and you should definitely watch it. It's not boring at all. It's very intriguing, and it's just amazing. Richard Linklater worked for 12 years on this, and it paid off because it's magnificent. Moving on to TV shows, of course, Pretty Little Liars Returned, which the debut winter premiere episode was, of course, very Pretty Little Liars-ish. It had intrigue, twists, deception, blah blah blah, hot guys. That's the most important part, the hot guys. <laughs> no, it's not. But it's fantastic. I love it. I know a lot of people don't. A lot of people think it's cheesy, but you know, I love it. My mom loves it. We have fun watching it together. I drool over Ian Harding. It's fun to watch. I love it. So, you know, if you like a mystery that's got, you know, twists and turns and every episode is full of mystery and deception and all that, check out Pretty Little Liars. I mean, the girls are gorgeous too. The guys are great looking. And the acting, they're superb. For this kind of show, the acting is solid. So yes, I adore Pretty Little Liars. And next up is, of course, American Horror Story Freak Show, which just returned, and I was so excited because they brought back Neil Patrick Harris. Well, they didn't bring him back. He brought They brought him on the show, and he plays his magician who has a marionette or puppet named Marjorie. But the thing is, when he's alone, Marjorie starts talking by herself, and he sees her as this girl who they brought back. This is why I meant... Uh, earlier. They brought back Jamie Brewer and Jamie Brewer is the actress who was in American Horror Story the first season and she was in Amer no, American, American Horror Story Coven and she has Down Syndrome but she's still a fantastic actress and that's one reason I love Ryan Murphy and Brad Falchuk by the way. They allow people with Down Syndrome, whatever, like anybody to be in their projects and that's amazing to me that they allow these people the chance to you know, live their dreams because they're no different than you and I. They might look different or act different, but inside they're the same people. So they deserve the same opportunities. But anyway, she's fantastic. Neil Patrick Harris is fantastic. And the whole show is fantastic. There's a lot of like shocking things going on. And it's very grotesque and I love it. And there's only two episodes left before the season ends. <sighs> but I have to see it because Neil Patrick Harris is going to be in these last two episodes also. So I'm so excited. And the TV show that's newish to me, it's not new at all, is Twin Peaks. And I actually watch Twin Peaks because I love Deadly Premonition and everyone said that's the Twin Peaks of video games. And they are making a season three, so my like, gosh, should watch the original show. It's very strange, but I love it. And there are definitely similarities between Twin Peaks and Deadly Premonition. There's even homages to Twin Peaks in Deadly Premonition because I've noticed the sheriff's department looks exactly the same in both the TV show and the game. The two main characters, Dale Cooper and Francis York Morgan, are very similar. They both love coffee and they're kind of eccentric. But Twin Peaks is about the murder of a local, 
local girl named Laura Palmer, and special agent uh, Dale Cooper has to go to Twin Peaks, and he's investigating the murder, and he gets to meet all the citizens of Twin Peaks, basically. And they're all very strange. This town is very strange. Of course, Dale Cooper's very strange. And a lot of stuff happens, and there's a lot of... Like, everyone in the show is having an affair, it seems like. I'm like, every character is having an affair. I'm like, what's going on? Huh? Why is everyone having an affair in this town? Just divorce or break up with whoever you're with and be with the person you're having an affair with. Jeez, people. And, I'm just, and no one's really concerned in this town about Laura being killed, besides her parents. They're going crazy all the time. But no one else is really that concerned, besides trying to hide evidence and stuff. And It's, it's really good, though. David Lynch created this amazing show. And I'm so, so in love with this show. I'm only on the first season. I haven't seen the second season or the movie yet. But I'm loving it so far. But I do have to say, the intro to the show is probably the worst intro to a TV show I've ever seen. That is boring as all heck. Anyway, I love Twin Peaks. And if you haven't seen it yet, watch it. But I have to warn you, it's very strange. In a good way. Bye. Moving on to games, I really haven't played any new games because I was finishing up Dragon Age Inquisition because there's a ton of side quests and missions you can do and judgments to f meet out and main storylines and romances and I was just trying to do as much as I could in Dragon Age and enjoy my experience. I finally finished it yesterday, which today is January 10th as I'm filming, so the 9th. But yes, this game was incredible. There's a reason why I chose it as my game of 2014. It's just amazing and it's packed full of content. It's perfect. I mean, well, not perfect. I mean, there's obviously some, you know, minor glitches, but you know, I mean, as a game itself, it's pretty much perfect. And I loved it. It's a great RPG. And if you're into RPGs, definitely check this game out because you're getting your money's worth, okay? Your $60 is well spent, or if you get it for cheaper, even better. You're getting your money's worth. It took me over 60 hours to complete this game. So that's like a dollar an hour. Yeah. So that's not bad at all. So yes, check out Dragon Age Inquisition if it sounds even remotely interesting to you. And of course, all the music I love this month, or these last few weeks, I say month is really like the last three to four weeks between the last episode is in the description box down below. I really appreciate it if you listen to the music because I love this music and I like turning people on to new music so please give the songs a listen. Let me know if you like them or if you don't because I would love that. I just love to share music like glitter. Just spread it all over the place and hope that it sticks to people because that's what I do. <laughs> I'm weird. And finally the YouTubers this month that I adore the first one is a, a very dear friend of mine. I'm tired, okay? And I was shopping and all this stuff, so bleh. I didn't get a lot of sleep, so put up with me, okay? Just put up with me. But it's Pixel Nut, the first one. And she's very, very sweet, very adorable, and I just adore her. She's, like I said, such a sweetheart, and her videos are so fun to watch. She does, like, she does this amazing perler art and she's posted several videos of that. She has done loot crate unboxings. I don't think she's subscribed anymore to them but she does subscribe to Ipsy which is a makeup service subscription thing and she does like she's got a Funko Pop collection now. She did a pop video where she ran a contest and you know there's a lot of different videos that she's got on her channel and like I said she's adorable so go check her out and tell her Alyssa sent you if you subscribe to her because she's amazing and deserves a lot of love. So go check out Pixel Nut. Next up is another friend of mine, Cat Chat. And if you don't know, Cat Chat is Cat Jovi from 3 Kilobytes. But this is her channel where she basically vlogs and just gives different opinions about things like she'll make it vlogs about uh, bands she likes or you know, like her most recent video is her grandma's famous pie crust. And they're just all very interesting. Even if you're not interested in the topic she's speaking about, just listening to her speak about it makes you interested in it, if you get what I'm saying. But Kat is a lovely person, and I'm so glad I know her. She's um, she's incredible, so give her some love as well. Next up is Sporadic Spacebar. I am 
a new subscriber to your channel, but I love your videos. They're very detailed and thorough. And Spray Spacebar is, of course, a gamer, so if you like gaming channels, check out his channel. He's a really nice guy, too. He's commented on several of my videos, and he's so nice. So go check him out. Give him some support. He's just awesome. He makes awesome videos. And lastly is TheFunnyNerd.com. Now, I did a video response to him, but he is... He's so nice. <laughs> Everyone's so nice. I'm always like, oh, they're so nice. But he is. And he has really great videos. Like, he's done lists and, you know, all these different kinds of videos. I can't think today, so I'm sorry. But <laughs> just trust me. His channel is great. And he's just a lovely guy. So check out TheFunnyNerd.com. And that's it for this favorites video. I'm so sorry that I'm kind of like, woo. Because, you know, like I said, I'm sleep deprived, I'm tired, I just went shopping, which takes a lot out of you, believe it or not. So please forgive me. At least I hope this was entertaining. <laughs> yes, you can laugh at me being all woo. Please laugh. Please. <laughs> if you like this video, please leave a like. Leave a comment down below letting me know what your favorites are and what you think about what my favorites are. And favorite series friends and family can see, share me as long as you do it nicely. And don't forget to subscribe for more weirdness in the future. I can guarantee you that I will be weird again because I'll be sleep deprived and all this stuff. So I can guarantee it. <laughs> but yeah, it's a lot of fun. So subscribe. And I'm gonna go. Peace and kisses. Bye.